one of the few mathematicians in the later 17th century who was Newton's equal, really, in stature, was Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, who was also credited with inventing the calculus. Leibniz was slightly younger than Newton. Uh, his training was in law. He worked as a diplomat in Paris. He came to London first in 1673. He had an introduction to members of the Royal Society, so he visited the Royal Society. He came with a calculating machine, which he hoped to improve. And on the strength of that, he was admitted as a member of the Royal Society. But in talking to other members of the Royal Society, he realised at that stage that his mathematical knowledge was actually very limited and that there were people in Britain who knew much more mathematics than he did. And so he decided to rectify this. He went back to Paris. He worked with Huygens as a tutor and, rather like Newton, taught himself mathematics from the best literature of the day, really, and with Huygens as a tutor. And during these years, he worked on many of the same problems that Newton had been working on 10 years earlier, the same sort of problems of tangent and quadrature that were of interest to several mathematicians at the time. And in the process of doing so, over a period of about three years, Leibniz too discovered the key elements of the calculus. He discovered a technique of what we now call differentiation. He discovered a technique of integration. And he saw how these are inverse processes, how they go together. And so by 1675 or 1676, Leibniz had all the key ingredients of the calculus. We know this now because we have Leibniz's manuscripts and we can retrace his thought in a way. We can see that he did this, that he did it independently, um, regardless of anything that Newton had done earlier. In 1676 he came back to London and at that point he talked to John Collins and Collins showed him some of Newton's manuscripts. This was to lead to huge problems later because, of course, people could say that he'd seen Newton's manuscripts and possibly learned from them, possibly even taken ideas from them. We know in hindsight that he didn't do that, that he actually copied out parts of Newton's manuscripts, but they were not the parts to do with the calculus. They were, in fact, the parts to do with infinite series, which Leibniz became very interested in. In the course of 1676, Newton also wrote two very long letters to Leibniz, which he sent through Henry Oldenburg, Secretary of the Royal Society, setting out some of his discoveries. At this stage, there was no hint, really, of any controversy. Newton obviously felt free to do this and felt confident in doing this, that his work was not going to be plagiarised or stolen. And so he set out for Leibniz some of his key discoveries, again much more to do with infinite series than to do with the calculus. If you read these letters nowadays, you'll find very few traces of calculus in as we now understand it. You'll find a lot of results on infinite series, which Newton was extraordinarily proud of, and rightly so. And so Leibniz had access to quite a lot of Newtonian material by 1676. And this was to lead to real problems later, when nobody knew quite who knew what, who'd seen what, what Newton had given away, what Leibniz had seen, and so on. 